How do you clean a dirty evaporator coil in a tight crawl space? Today I'm going to show you how. How does that dirty evaporator coil affect the air conditioner? And it's a nightmare to replace the filter, so how can we make this better? You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. This is Taddy Digest. I'm Tad. Let's get started. Here's the outdoor condenser for this air conditioning system. I've got the gauges connected and here's my standing pressure. It is 200 PSI. Right here is the tag and you can see this is a two ton. It is a 24,000 BTU. Over here we got the manufacture date. It's 2009 and it's also 410A. So standing pressure looks pretty good. Uh, 2009. Now let's go inside, turn the thermostat onto the cooling mode so that we can actually see what this unit is doing before we, before we clean that dirty evaporator coil. Here's our thermostat. Let's push the mode button. It's off right now until it says cooling. Let's go ahead and turn it down to maybe 70 degrees. Here's where our filter grill is and this one doesn't have a filter, but we could easily make a rack right here to hold a filter. And this would be much easier than crawling in that crawl space to actually put the filter inside that indoor air handler. You can see they've got a fan set up because the unit hasn't been working. I just got done replacing a capacitor because that was the problem, the first problem. After I replaced the capacitor, I went into the crawl space to check the filter and there was no filter. And that's when I seen the coil. So I came back and now we've got to finish servicing this air conditioner or repairing it by cleaning that coil. Let's go check out those pressures. Air conditioner is on. Let's check out these pressures. Looks like the suction line is freezing. Look at that, freezing. Starting to ice over. All right, now let's check out the low side and the high side pressure. Low side pressure is 86 with a saturation of 24. So saturation temperature is below freezing. High side pressure is 244 with a saturation of 82. So let's look at our suction line temperature and our liquid line temperature. Our suction line temperature is 30 and that means our superheat is 3. Our liquid line temperature is 79. So our subcooling is about three. So super heat, way too low, needs to be 10. How did I get that? Subtracted the suction line temperature and the saturation temperature. We're starting to frost, we're starting to freeze up. Pressures are low. Look at that, that's not good. Let's go check our supply air temperature and then we're gonna dive in this crawl space and I'm gonna show you this dirty coil and we're gonna get it clean. I was gonna check the supplier temperature, but you can't even feel any air coming out. So if there's no air coming out of your vents, there could be a few problems. One, it could be the fan motor is not spinning. It could be that the coal's dirty. It could be the filter stopped up. It could be that the coal's frozen solid. In our case, that coal is so dirty that it is preventing air from getting through it. So we can't even feel it here. I was gonna check supplier temperature, but I'm not gonna get an accurate reading. I mean, it's reading 68, but I mean, there's no air coming out. So yeah, uh, definitely bring an anometer with you to your jobs, measure your feet per minute. If you don't know anything about duct work and how to use an anometer, use a duculator, go check out my members only content. I've got a video specifically on how to use an anometer and what you should see on your supply vents as far as feet per minute and then how to do a calculation to get your CFM. You should be doing that on every startup when you're commissioning, finding out what your CFM is. That way you know what BTU you're at. And based off of the capacity that your equipment's rated for, uh, where, where you are, and then you can figure out if your equipment is actually pushing what it's rated for. Then you know there's a problem or you need to adjust something like fan speed. All right, let's go. What am I taking with me in the crawl space? And what do I do when I don't have a vapor barrier in a crawl space that I have to go into? I carry uh, vapor barrier material or rolls of plastic with me in my service vehicle. That way, if we don't have plastic 
down in our crawl space or a good vapor barrier, then I can put one down before I go inside. So keep that in mind. It's a great thing to have with you. That way you keep yourself clean. Then you can go to the no next job and you don't have to change clothes. So what am I taking with me? I'm taking this brush here. I'm taking some coil cleaner. I'm taking my DeWalt uh, battery powered little mini vacuum cleaner. I've got a pump sprayer filled up with water there. And then of course I've got my drill. And then I've got a light band headlamp. Definitely taking this with me. I've got another portable light LED and I've got a, another light and some gloves. So this is a light. We're going to take this with us as well. Let's go ahead and dive in. Let's go. Wow, my vacuum cleaner. No, my vacuum cleaner barely fits. Oh, I can push it in from the side. Yes. Oh, I was worried. Ah. Ah. Oh, that is awesome. I want to do this every morning. have any airflow. Do you see a filter right here? No, there's no filter. Why? Because it's a nightmare. Here's where the filter is supposed to go. You can see this little cover that says filter. That's where they take the cover off and actually install it. Um, I did turn the breaker off and I also uh, turned the thermostat off, of course. Um, that way we're safe as possible. So there's only three screws in this panel. I brought 516 screws with me because we're going to put all the screws back in. Why was there only three? Because again, it's a nightmare to come in here. And I'm sure whoever was replacing this filter just decided I'm gonna make this as easy as possible. So we're gonna put three screws back in the panel. Um, but once we get it clean, we're gonna actually build a rack and I'm gonna put the filter up there. That way they don't have to deal with this anymore uh, because this is just, I feel for them. I feel for them having to come and uh, put a filter in. So let's go ahead and get started cleaning this coil. All right, what are we going to do first? We're going to insert our battery, insert our battery into our DeWalt vacuum cleaner. Then I'm going to take and attach this piece here. And we're going to first go over the coil with this brush and see if we can get any loose dirt. Although I don't think that's going to work because the coil is wet. Right. If you can hear me better right now, the reason is because when I entered the crawl space, my mic fell off. So I had to go back over there towards the hole and get my mic. Now let's finish cleaning this coil. All right, let's hit it with the brush. Oh, we're okay. Okay. That's working. That is working. Look at that. Look at that. I'm so happy. You'd think I was eating at my favorite restaurant, but cleaning this coil is satisfying. All right, look at that. Now I brush it all down there. Now I'm going to vacuum it. And then I really can't get to this up top here. But look at the difference. I mean, let me know in the comments what you think. Share your 
scary stories with me. Give me your worst in the comments. Worst one you've seen. I'm gonna go ahead and suck all this up. Look at that, man. Down here, all this junk. looking really good. I did kind of scratch it a little bit, but I think it's going to be better. Plus, honestly, we got, we need a better solution than this um, for maintenance, serviceability. We're going to go over that here in a moment. So now I am going to try to brush it again, vacuum it again. Then I'm going to hit it with some cold cleaner and try to wash it. All right, we're going to hit it with some Viper. Now this is no rinse, but I am going to do a good rinse on this. And then I'll spray it again and we'll put it into the cooling mode. All right. All right. Looks like I need some more power. And I would drag a water hose underneath here but I just, it's not a sealed crawl space. It doesn't have a pump. I just don't want to add to the humidity issues that we could have. Uh, I just don't want water to stay underneath here if it's not going to drain out of the crawl space. All right, I'm going to spray this off real good and make sure the drain is, is draining properly. You know, this is a good way to control, you know, that spray. All right, and then we will uh, spray it again, close up this uh, air handler and go check those pressures. All right, let's go ahead and hit it with cold cleaner again and close it up. And this is self rinsing, so when we put it in the cooling mode, condensation, it'll wash this cool. Should make it smell good too. All right, there we go. All right, now we're actually going to put some screws in here instead of having just three. And uh, actually, uh, I've got self-tap screws. Oh, don't leave my light in there. You know how many times I have left a tool inside of a crawl space? In fact, I left my wire strippers in this crawl space. Have you ever left a tool in a crawl space and just was like, forget it, I'm not going back? Or attic, vice versa, let me know. So here's the screws that we're in. The unit, look, there's only three, man. <laughs> look at that. So what I did was, if they're still inside my hoodie, I've got three more. Yes! All right, so now, just take my battery out of my uh, vacuum cleaner, put it in my drill, got my 5 sixteenths, and let's go ahead and put these screws in and Turn the unit back on to the cooling mode. Then we're gonna go over the pressures and the difference. Hopefully there's nothing else wrong. And then we're gonna talk about a better solution. How'd you get out of there so fast, son? Oh, I wish I was small just to get in the crawl spaces. The rest of the time, I'm good, man. I'd be good. Oh, hey, this is the uh, plastic sheeting that I'm using. It's uh, by uh, Warps Plastic Sheeting, four mil, 10 by 25 feet. So 10 by 25. All right. All right. Sorry for the excessive grunting, guys. I had to do it. Let's get this unit back on. Now we can see the difference of the pressures before and after we've cleaned this evaporator coil. So take a look first at the pressures. Remember we were at 90 for our low side, now we're at 120. Our uh, saturation before was 27, now it's 40. Then our head pressure was around 240, uh, and it's 277. Our saturation right here was I think 82, now it's 90. So when we 
have a dirty coil which restricts the airflow, it lowers the pressure. Our suction pressure was low, right? Our evaporator pressure was low. Whenever we clean it, we increase airflow, we increase suction pressure. When you increase, when you uh, affect the pressure of one side, it affects the pressure of the other side. So you can see that. Now look at this. No more frost. So we can see it's not freezing up anymore. And then if we look at our suction line temperature, oh, just shut off. Let me click it. Suction line temperature is 55 and our liquid line temperature is 77. So if we take 55, we subtract it by 40, that's 15 degrees of superheat. Before I think it was like three degrees of superheat and then three degrees of subcooling. Now if we take 90, subtract by our liquid line, it is about 13 degrees of subcooling. 15 degrees superheat where it was three and now 13 degrees of subcooling where it was three. So this looks a lot better. Now, I think we got a little bit of a high load condition, so maybe I can um, associate that with a high head pressure. I'm sorry, not a high head pressure, this is 410A. So yeah, I mean, th these are pretty good pressures. 118 and 275, that's pretty good. Now let's check and see if we have good airflow and what our supplier temperature is. Now, I wish I'd have checked the airflow before, but there was literally nothing coming out of the vent. I'm going to go ahead and use my anometer. I'm going to lay it down. And we have got a good amount of airflow. It looks like it is 900 feet per minute. Supply air temperature is 58. And it is dropping. So that's great because it's, I think, 77 in here. So just by what's on the thermostat, we got a 19 degree split. Before it was 68 and you couldn't feel any of the air. Now what can we do better? For not only the filter, but the air conditioner. So this is a cabin, notice right here above the door. This would be a perfect place for a mini split, right? Wall mount air handler right here. Line sets go straight out, down, and the outdoor unit would set where the other outdoor unit sets now. Why would a mini split be good for this? Because if we put it right there, then it's able to heat and cool the whole cabin and then go into the bathroom. Now, right now, there are no vents from the air conditioner or the air handler and the ductwork that actually go into the bathroom. I think this mini split would work better. And then nobody has to go underneath to maintenance anything, uh, whether it's a blower motor replacement or maybe it's a contactor or a relay. That's my idea, and that's what I plan on proposing whenever we do need to replace this equipment. Now, what can we do for the filter? I think we should take this little floor grill off. We should take some angles, and we should get a filter that fits. And it looks like this is probably gonna be a 16 by 20, or 25, or a 14 by 20, or 14 by 25. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for sure. I may go ahead and get a filter for now, uh, just for today and just put it right here over the grill just so we don't get any debris or dirt inside We don't want that, but that's what I'm going to do to handle this situation Hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you learned something if you did learn something Let me know what it was down in the comments if you got a question remember questions can lead to new content So put your questions down below if there's certain content you'd like to see comment below and I'll check out what your suggestion is and if it can help somebody to learn I'm on it. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. If you want more videos like this, go check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. I've got hundreds of videos of live experience in the field as a technician to help you be a better technician. So go take advantage of all that free content. If you want to advance yourself in this trade, I strongly admonish you to go check out my members only content, learning how to size ductwork, maybe how to sell a mini split, maybe how to get new customers for your business or learn more about geothermal, tons of training and it's only around 25 or $30 per month. You have to be a level three member. You'll also get my email and I've got a bunch of guides that I can send you that can help you to fast track your career in the HVAC field. You've been watching Taddy Digest. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.